In the first half of the 20th century, the Santa Clara Valley was very different than it is today. Its wealth lay in the abundance of family farms that produced fruit and vegetable for the San Francisco Bay Area and beyond. Thousands of orchards covered the valley from the San Francisco Bay to the foothills of the Santa Cruz Mountains. My name is Mary Hannell. I am the local history librarian at Santa Clara City Library, and I invite you to join us for the story of one particular farm and the family that lived and worked there. Welcome to The Better Part, a program that encompasses a diverse spectrum of topics important to our community, which we hope will both inform and entertain you. We invite you to sit back and enjoy the program. Farm and House at 1889 Market Street in the town of Santa Clara was one of the many farms in the Santa Clara Valley producing fruit from their orchards for the San Francisco Bay Area. The original house consisted of 13 acres including a house, barn, and summer kitchen. The summer kitchen was used during the hot summer months for canning, laundry, and soap making. A tank house that currently stands on the property was not originally part of the farm. It was moved to the property from the nearby Rumboldt's farm in 1987 when that property was purchased by a developer. The farm received its name, the Harris Last Museum, in recognition of two families that occupied the site between the years of 1865 and 1987. No other families have ever lived on the farm. Henry Harris, the first owner, was born in Surrey, England in 1819. A cabinet maker by trade, he left England around 1840 and traveled throughout South America and Australia. In 1846, he settled in the Santa Clara Valley. In 1865, he purchased 13 acres of land and built a farm. He occupied the farm with his wife Mary and teenage children Miriam and Albert. Henry's wife Mary died in 1884. Albert, who by then was becoming a prominent banker for the Bank of Santa Clara Valley, remodeled the farmhouse creating a double parlor, an office, and additional rooms. In 1906, the last family, Christian, his wife, Julia, their son, Frederick, his wife, also named Julia, and their three daughters, Carolina, Julia, and Joanna, occupied the house. Christian Lass was born in Germany in 1843. He went to sea at the age of 15. He quickly rose to the rank of captain. In 1895, he suffered a leg injury that forced his retirement. By the time he retired, he owned or was partner in 18 sailing ships. He settled in the Santa Clara Valley where he remained until his death in 1920. By 1969, when Fred's wife Julia died, most of the property had been sold and the remaining three and a half acres was no longer producing a crop. The final harvest was complete and the property would no longer be a farm. Various members of the last family occupied the house until 1985 when Joanna, the youngest and last surviving daughter of Frederick and Julia, 
could no longer maintain the house and moved to a retirement home. In 1987, Joanna sold the house at below market value to the city of Santa Clara with the agreement that the property be preserved for future generations. The city of Santa Clara has restored the property to represent a typical farmhouse of the era from 1900 to 1930. When visiting the property, let your imagination draw you to the past. It is a warm spring morning in the Santa Clara Valley. The sun has just broken the horizon. The last family is already up and about. The captain is at the sink that he has had installed in his bedroom to provide the convenience of an uninterrupted morning shave. Grandmother Julia has been feeling poorly and has not slept well. She is in her bedroom sewing dresses for the girls' recital. The captain will spend more time in his bedroom planning his day, but first he must perform a morning ritual. He walks down the hallway to the speaker tube that he has had installed. It connects the upstairs hall to the kitchen. He will discuss his breakfast choice with his daughter-in-law, Julia. The girls rise early. They must practice the piano for two hours before school. Activity begins downstairs as Fred and Julia prepare for their day. Because they are responsible for the daily operation of the house and farm, their bedroom is on the first floor of the house. Julia is on her way to the kitchen to prepare the children's breakfast. The adults will have their breakfast after the children have finished. The last house contains a modern kitchen with all the latest conveniences, gas stove, toaster, and icebox. The girls sit down for breakfast of porridge. The talk around the table is of school and the upcoming piano recital. After the adults complete their breakfast, they leave the house to perform their daily chores.
One important chore is to assure that there is a sufficient supply of fresh water. The captain will engage the windmill to pump water to the tank, which sits higher than the house. This allows gravity to provide an ample supply of water to the house. Frederick begins his day in the machine shop. The shop is equipped to handle any repair that is necessary from simple home repair to manufacturing parts for the farm equipment. As evening approaches, everyone gathers in the parlor to await dinner. This is a good time for the girls to persuade their grandfather to tell them one of his many stories. They sit at his feet, enthralled with his tales of adventure on the high seas. After dinner, the family will read, play games, or listen to music. It is obvious that this family appreciates music by the number of musical instruments and musical devices in the parlor. The last family has an organ, piano, and zither, as well as an Edison gramophone and Regina music box. My grandmother played the zither. She used to play in concerts in San Francisco. That organ was played when my husband and I got married. We were married at Mom's and Dad's house on Homestead Road, and they moved the organ out there. My music teacher played the wedding march for us on that when we were married. Dinner in the last house is a formal affair. Mother Julia announces that dinner is ready. Everyone proceeds to their place at the table and stands by their chair. As a captain enters, he inspects each child for cleanliness. Everyone bows their head for the blessing. Over the years, members of the family have lived and died in the house. Children married and moved from the house, but remained attached and visited often. April 16, 1910, Grandmother Julia was the first member of the family to pass on. In 1913, at age 13 years and nine months, after a short illness related to a bicycle accident, young Julia joined her grandmother in death. Captain Lass died in March of 1920. He had lived 76 years. On May 26, 1932, Fred passed away. In 1918, Carolina married Thomas Bull and left the house to raise her family. Carolina passed away in 1964. Mother Julia often stated she wished to live until 1965 when the house would be 100 years old. She lived to see the 100th year of the house and passed away four years later on October 18, 1969. After the death of her mother, Johanna lived in the house until 1985 when she moved to a retirement home. She lived to see her dream, the restoration of the house 
and it's used to teach future generations about Santa Clara Valley's agricultural era. Johanna, the last surviving member of the family to live in the house, passed away on February 27, 2000. The final crop is harvested. The Harris and last families are gone, but the house still provides a valuable reminder of another time in Santa Clara Valley. Every Christmas in there for 80 years. Even my, my grandchildren came here for Christmas. The kids remember it. They remember staying here and being here. Today, the house is used to promote the history of the Santa Clara Valley and as a venue to raise funds for historical preservation projects. The garden provides a perfect setting for summer events. Among these events are the Santa Clara Garden Tour and the Antique Appraisal Show and Tell Picnic. House tours are conducted on most weekends and the Harris Last Museum is used as a headquarters for planning the annual Santa Clara Historic Home Tour. Every few years the house is included on the tour. The Santa Clara Unified School District, at the request of the Historical Preservation Society of Santa Clara, has developed a curriculum to promote interest in the house. Children in grades one through five have classes on the big house on Market Street. The classroom work is supplemented with a field trip to the house where they will experience what they have studied in the classroom. This was one of the greatest additions to the program. We were able to read stories about what life was like for the children and they also um, made these books in five different levels. Each of the books is a, a book of stories, short stories, that are about the children that lived here at the time. Well, third grade social studies focuses on local history. So the children are able to learn about what life was like back in the farming time of Santa Clara Valley. They get to do some calligraphy and write in ink, which is much different. Play some of the games like marbles or jack. And inside the house, they just love to see all the different things. This is a toaster. Does it look like your toaster? No. No. There's no plug. Back, the girls, when they moved here, didn't have electricity. They had to make their toast on top of the stove. Each summer, the good citizens of Santa Clara gather in the garden for the fundraising tea, featuring a performance by actors from History San Jose's Portraits of the Past. Actors from this ensemble, dressed in period costumes, portray actual pioneers from Santa Clara Valley's past. Following the performance, the actors mingle with the guests.
The garden is also available for weddings, birthdays, and other occasions. If you would like to visit the Harris Lass House, it is located in the city of Santa Clara. The address is 1889 Market Street. You can also visit the website at www.harrislass.org. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you have found today's program both informative and interesting. If you would like to suggest a topic or a guest for the better part, you can always reach us at the Cupertino Senior Center. The number there is 408-777-3150. You can learn more about us and order a copy of this program or one of the many programs that we've done by visiting our website. The website address is www.thebetterpart.com. The Better Part has many of its programs available through the Santa Clara County Library System. And The Better Part has selected programs also on YouTube. Thanks again for watching. See you next week.